I'm in Middle Street in the heart of Galway, outside this historic building, uh, the Galway Mechanics Institute, which has been headquarters uh, to the movement in the city uh, since 1844. So I'm going to do the recording inside, and I see committee uh, member uh, Nuala Nolan is there to welcome me. But if this building has been occupied since 1844, we have to go back even further, almost two decades further, to find the origins of the Mechanics Institute in the city, which first opened in 1826. The history of the Galway Mechanics is too long and too involved to be covered in detail here. So my principal focus will be on the early years uh, before uh, the Great Famine of the 1840s though I will survey uh, subsequent uh, developments. As we'll see, between the 1820s and the 1840s, the Irish public sphere became crowded, and mechanics institutes jostled with other bodies, temperance, Catholic emancipation, repeal, uh, whose priorities intersected and overlapped in various ways with theirs. There are no surviving records of the Galway mechanics prior to 1862, so we're dependent on the local press for periods before that. Of course, there's a small secondary literature on mechanics institutes in Ireland, and I'm indebted in particular to the research and insights of Elizabeth Neswald and uh, Marta uh, Ramon. On the face of things, Galway was not the most auspicious location uh, for the movement. Located in the far west of Ireland, it was once a notable port, but it entered a long decline in the 17th century. The closest to a dynamic sector in 1826 was the grain trade, and it was at the beating heart of that trade that the first Galway Mechanics Institute located itself uh, when it opened its library and newspaper reading room in the Corn Exchange in Air Square. The Galway Institute followed the example of Dublin, established in 1824, and Belfast, Cork, Limerick, Waterford, Armagh in 1825. As several scholars have observed, it is surprising that a movement focused on the scientific education of working people should have gained such a foothold in a country bereft of large-scale industry, and uh, with uh, very few cities. And perhaps uh, surprising too that this took place in a context of protracted subsistence crises, of sectarian tension and of highly charged politics. However, even if the Act of Union was a work in progress in 1826, this was the year when the uh, Irish and British currencies uh, were merged, uh, members of the Irish elites were strongly connected by education and by reading with their peers in Britain. And it's not so surprising that the new movement have been, uh, should have been taken up by some of them. And even if circumstances limited its applicability, the rhetoric of the British mechanics movement in relation to the urgency of scientific education echoed uh, through its sister movement in Ireland. The 1826 initiative uh, came from members of Galway's local elite, including the mayor, the town's MP, and prominent professionals, a different social layer than that associated with the movement in Britain. As with institutes elsewhere, discussion of politics and religion was banned, but both uh, nonetheless uh, bubbled uh, beneath the surface. The announcement of the institute in August 1826 came during a critical general election campaign in which Catholic emancipation loomed large. In the circumstances, it is likely that some, at least some, of the beleaguered local elite behind the Institute hoped to influence the votes of the tradesmen. That less than a third of the initial members uh, were operative tradesmen, however, suggests no great appetite among the working population. The choice of the controversial 
Archbishop of Tuam, Anglican Archbishop of Tuam, Power Le Père Trench, as patron of the institute, was relevant to this. The Archbishop was an evangelical Protestant associated with efforts to convert the Catholic poor. So in a town that was more than 95% Catholic, his prominence was going to cause suspicion. Further partisanship in the 1830 general election proved to be the last straw, and the first Galway Mechanics Institute uh, collapsed in public uh, ignominy, <laughs> ignominy and uh, financial embarrassment um, in, uh, 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 in that year in 1830. It had lasted only four years, but that wasn't exceptional among the early Mechanics Institutes. For Dublin had closed uh, also by 1830, as had several of the others that I've mentioned. A revival of the mechanics movement took place, took place in the late 1830s, signalled by the re-establishment of the Dublin Institute uh, towards the end of 1837, uh, facilitated by government support for scientific education, and coinciding uh, with the heyday of the temperance movement. Temperance generated enormous uh, popular excitement in Ireland, with tens of thousands flocking to hear Father Theobald Matthew and taking the pledge to forswear alcohol. The second iteration of the uh, mechanics movement in Galway was connected with this fervour. In February 1840, a Galway, a Galway Trades Temperance Society, um, which had dated from 1838, announced that it was reconstituting itself as the Galway Trades Mechanics Institute Total Abstinence and Mortality Association. Clearly, the impetus was quite different uh, to what it had been in 1826. But some elite support is apparent in support, uh, insofar as um, Dennis Kerwin, a banker and the proprietor of the Castle Hackett Estate near Tuam, was involved in the management of a loan fund uh, connected with it. And in a rebuke uh, to the promoters of the earlier institute, a prominent Catholic clergyman, the prior of the local Dominican community, was chosen as patron. Two of the rules adopted in 1840 merit quoting here. One, that no persons shall be admitted members of this society unless tradesmen the sons of tradesmen bound to their respective professions are apprentices, apprentices who are in the second year of their apprenticeship. And that no person be admitted a member of the above association unless he can produce testimonials of his pledge from the very Reverend Theobald Matthew of Cork or any of the Catholic clergymen of the town. Now, night classes were offered to tradesmen in geometry, surveying and drawing which is consistent with the Mechanics Institute mission more generally. Also, like other temperance bodies, the Galway Mechanics identified music uh, as a social alternative to the public house. Two Mechanics Institute bands were formed, a string band and a marching band. In combining the objectives of temperance and the mechanics movement, uh, Galway was unique in the Irish context. But there was close cooperation between uh, the two in Carrick and Shore, and uh, indeed in other places. Early in 1844, uh, construction work commenced in Middle Street on the new headquarters in which I'm standing, uh, which was intended to be, quote, a worthy temple to science for the intellectual improvement of the trades and humbler classes of Galway. The premises which incorporated an earlier structure, um, uh, opened in, in that year. And at the outset, there was a good library and a newspaper reading room, which was boosted by donations from local gentry. The customary rule banning religious and political engagement was adopted, but it was overlooked in some circumstances, as when masses uh, were celebrated uh, to accommodate the overflow from the pro-cathedral uh, next door, and when the mechanics band led a, quote, dense crowd to welcome Daniel O'Connell to Galway during the campaign for repeal of the Act of Union in 1843. 
Its investment in the Middle Street premises placed the Institute under financial pressure, however, and it became necessary to expand membership. Amended rules of November 1844 allowed, quote, sober and well-conducted mechanics uh, to join uh, whether they were pledged uh, teetotalers or not. Also, professional gentlemen were enabled to become members on payment of a premium fee. By 1844, there were already indications that the educational programme was at a level which would have been challenging for the average artisan, as the titles of a series of 12 lectures delivered uh, in that year by the noted scientist and promoter of the mechanics movement, uh, Dr. Robert Kane, indicates. Fanon interrupted the educational work of the Institute, and its resumption in the autumn of 1849 coincided with the opening of the new university, Queen's College Galway. Thereafter, the Institute was able to draw on the knowledge of the Queen's College professors, including Thomas Moffat, who gave a series of lectures on political economy early in 1850. With its programme of lectures increasingly catering for middle-class audiences, the, uh, the Institute remained for an extended period the headquarters of the Galway Trades, just as the Dublin Institute was in that city. The best organised workers locally were carpenters and stonemasons who were in demand even during the terrible famine years of the late 1840s and early 1850s when major building projects were undertaken in Galway, including the new university, uh, the canal, harbour and railway um, uh, works as well. In 1849, the Galway Trades celebrated the laying of the foundation stone of the railway station with a procession to the station site from the Mechanics Institute and concluding here with a celebratory breakfast. The railway, it was anticipated, was the key to restoring prosperity and a campaign was inaugurated to have Galway established as a packet station for the mails between the United Kingdom and North America. The uh, Institute joined enthusiastically in the campaign, electing as its president, Father Peter Daly, the local priest who led the campaign for the packet station. When Daly was accused of neglecting his parish duties and disciplined by his bishop, he was cautioned not to participate in any public meetings, quote, whether under the name of mechanics institutes or trade unions. In June 1861, uh, the priest addressed a large crowd from the window of the Mechanics Institute. The packet station uh, proved to be an illusion, however, and the railway, far from restoring prosperity, did the opposite, bringing imports from industrial Britain and undercutting small-scale Irish manufacturers. Reflecting this process, Galway's population fell at every successive census after 1851, reaching a low of 13,255 in 1911. During these decades, some attention was paid to the original mission of the Mechanics Institutes uh, through the provision of continuing education for apprentices. In 1870, funding was secured from the Board of National Education and the Galway Mechanics was recognised as a national school, offering instruction five evenings a week in reading, spelling, writing, arithmetic, composition, geometry, and mensuration. But it struggled to maintain regular attendance, and in 1875, official recognition and funding ceased. Other initiatives of a broadly educational character included a short-lived literary and debating society in the 1870s, and a Mechanics Institute Literary Society in the mid-1880s. In 1887, the Galway Express paid a tribute to the Institute's magnificent library and to its members, which it said, quote, comprised the most learned and respectable gentlemen in the community, among which all branches of science and all grades and professions are represented. Fulsome as it was, the tribute suggests that the Institute was no longer the domain of tradesmen. As for the magnificent library, it remained an important resource until the 1920s, 
when it began to be overtaken by the public library service. By the late 19th century, new pastimes were displacing reading and debating. A fully equipped billiard room was opened in 1884, while card playing became a key activity in the following decades. That a new dance floor was installed in 1827, sorry, 1927, tells its own story. Annual excursions by train were always fully subscribed. The general direction of developments was towards sociability rather than self-improvement or education. When members voted in 1948 by a two-to-one margin to open a bar on the premises, the link was temp with temperance was decisively broken and the bar is there uh, behind me. Paddy Diveny, who became a member soon afterwards, recalled a socially mixed membership in the 1950s and 1960s, consisting of tradesmen, white-collar employees of city shops and business owners, with the latter dominating the 17-member council. You didn't get in if you had any blot at all in your copybook, he said. There were interactions with rowing clubs and soccer clubs in annual billiard and snooker competitions all amounting to a vibrant uh, club life of male sociability, according uh, to Paddy Divney. Only on occasional social nights did members bring their wives. By the end of the 20th century, however, club life was in retreat in the face of television, suburbanisation and drink driving laws. And this gave rise to financial problems. Considering how the Institute might be made more relevant, there were long discussions about its purpose, recalls Frank Kelly, Executive Secretary at the time. Uh, Recognising that the original purpose was educational and broadly cultural, efforts were made to pick up, uh, pick up those strands of the mechanics tradition. To this end, connections were made with community organisations, uh, such as the Deaf Club, with trade unions and with individuals in the university who began to hold their meetings and public events there. In a significant departure in 2013, a number of women were admitted to membership. The women immediately established an art club which has already become a flagship of the institute. Today, or at least until the pandemic interrupted things, there is a mix of activity. Snooker and cards, long-time staples, continue alongside art exhibitions, musical performances and public talks. It is anticipated that the consequent increase in the numbers using the building will make it viable for the coming decades. The latest adaptation is one of several over the past 195 years, as the Galway Mechanics Institute has faced the challenges of changing times and scarce resources. Its story has singular elements, and also elements that typified the developments of the movement in Ireland. At different periods, as we have seen, it gave priority to learning, to moral reform, to workers' rights, to local improvement, to sport and to sociability. Situated at the heart of the city, its premises are a local landmark. But during most of the past century, its purpose has been mysterious uh, to most people. In the smaller city of the 1920s and 1930s, it had a certain glamour and its social functions were fashionable. For the high point of the Galway mechanics, however, we must go back to the mid-19th century, when it was centre stage in the preoccupations of the day in campaigns for temperance and for the economic development of the city.